everybody. Uh, Tom Oldham here with Dynamic Velocity. Uh, wanted to uh, cover some questions I've been getting uh, recently around uh, pitch grips. So the question was um, basically I have a fastball grip, changeup grip, cutter. Should I, and if those aren't, if those pitches aren't working, should I tinker with uh, the grip? So that was really the question. I've also been getting a lot of questions just around overall placement of the hands and the fingers for younger guys, older guys, that sort of thing. So I just wanted to cover uh, just some general things about pitch grips and uh, cover that cover that question. We'll give it a few more um, seconds here to see if anybody else uh, joins us. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll cover those. Uh, as well. I've just been receiving a lot of questions about uh, pitch grips, different pitch grips, so I wanted to cover those uh, tonight. So the main question uh, was, I have a certain grip, should I, if the pitch isn't working for me, should I tinker with that grip or should I uh, work through it? I am a big fan of uh, tinkering with, with grips. So uh, if you're and it typically happens with your changeup or uh, some of your other field pitches, curveball, slider, cutter, uh, different things like that. So what I would suggest is not only you tinker with the placement of your fingers uh, on the baseball, but also the pressure that you have with the finger on the baseballs, because you're going to get a different, different effect uh, based on the placement and the pressure of, of your fingers. So let's just kind of go over all of the uh, uh, pitch grips. So first one, four seam fastball. Uh, if you have the horseshoe of the baseball here and you lay it on the side, put your fingers over the top. Uh, that's generally uh, the very normal for a four seam fastball. What I tell our guys is as you're turning the baseball over, you want your thumb in the middle um, of your two fingers. And uh, generally speaking, your fingers are going to be as far apart as uh, your thumb can fit in them. If you, if you have a younger guy trying to figure out how to um, put put uh, his fingers on the ball, so that's four seam uh, four seam fastball grip. Now, if you're going to two seam fastball grip, uh, there's a couple different variations. So you could have it to where you have the horseshoe of the baseball turned to the side, put your fingers right on the seam. So I see some guys that uh, throw their two seamer uh, in this fashion. Uh, other guys. Uh, as you have the horseshoe of the baseball here, uh, for a right-handed thrower, they're actually going to put their index finger and middle finger here on the on the baseball, uh, and that basically, as they're uh, releasing the baseball, they're going to have pressure on this on this point here. So that's actually the preferred grip. That's the grip that I teach is when guys are getting the grip with their two seamer, rather than splitting your fingers on the seams have your fingers together, and then actually slide them on the opposite side of the baseball for the hand that you throw. Uh, at release, that's going to give the best effect in the, the run that you're, you're really looking for from, from your two-seamer. That is a pitch, though. You know, the, the question was, should, uh, should I maintain the grip that I'm having if I'm having trouble getting the effect or command, or should I tinker with uh, finger placement and pressure on the ball, and you, you definitely should. I'm a huge fan of tinkering with uh, placement of the finger and uh, the pressure. So on that pitch, if you're throwing, if, if you're throwing your two-seamer and your fingers are on the seams here and you're not getting a lot of run, what I would suggest is bringing your fingers together, sliding them up on uh, the horseshoe of the baseball, and then putting your index finger right inside that seam. Uh, so that would be placement of, of your fingers on the ball. And then what you can experiment with is applying different pressures with your fingertip on the ball uh, at release. I've seen a lot of, a lot of success with that as well. Um, so that's a two-seamer. So then change up. Uh, there's a lot of different variations for change up. What I always talk to players about is you want a changeup to look the same as your fastball out of your hand to the hitter. So if you throw a four seam fastball, uh, my suggestion is that you're gripping a four seam uh, changeup. 
And what you can do is basically, uh, if you're a younger guy and don't necessarily have um, big enough hands to really modify how you're going from your fastball to your changeup, uh, what I would suggest is more of a pitchfork where, again, you have that four seam grip, you have that four seam grip, and then <clears throat> you're basically having your three fingers just go right over the top, and then you have your index or your, uh, your thumb and your pinky uh, supporting the baseball underneath there. So <clears throat> that is that's a pitchfork changeup. Um, typically, I see this in more uh, youth pitchers rather than high school, college, or pro guys. Um, what I see more with them is more of the circle change or modified circle change. So for some guys, uh, they'll grip, again, four seam fastball grip. I'm going four seam change up grip. With the circle change, the big thing that you're trying to do is get the ball off of your dominant fingers. So your middle finger, your index finger, or your strong fingers with your fastball, you wanna move the baseball to your non-dominant fingers, uh, your uh, more of your ring finger pinky, uh, and then slightly on your middle finger here. So what I would suggest with your, with your um, change up is that you mess around with how big uh, you're making the circle on your circle change up. So when I was playing, I would actually have two types of change ups. I would have one where I had a wider or a yeah, wider circle uh, for more command with my change up. And then if I wanted to use my change up as an out pitch, get a little bit more downward action or run, I would then tighten the circle up on, on the changeup. And I would also uh, tinker with finger pressure with um, my middle finger uh, and also the placement of my pinky on the baseball because sometimes you're gonna get where that ball gets caught here and cuts rather than runs. So uh, that's, that's what I would suggest with the changeup is tinkering with not only the size of, or, and the shape of the circle, but also the pressure that you're putting on with the middle finger uh, and the, not necessarily the ring finger, but more the middle finger as you're out at, out at release. Um, with your curveball slider, um, typically curveball when you have the horseshoe here, uh, you have your hand on this side, thumb back on the other side here. Uh, this here is not, you're always gonna be feeling with your curveball, you're really gonna always be feeling the pressure with your middle finger down through the pitch, uh, but you can tinker with the placement of your fingers on the seams. So you could have it be on the horseshoe, um, or you could slide it down here. I've seen some guys that have success where they're throwing it more on top of the horseshoe here rather than, uh, rather than on the side. It just feels more comfortable for them, comes out of their, uh, comes out of their hand better. Um, uh, with your slider, very, very similar thing. Um, typically, uh, if, if a guy is just learning a slider, we're having the horseshoe um, go on its side. Fingers are right inside here, and we're putting pressure down uh, with, the, with the middle finger here on that seam. But again, if that's not working or it's not feeling comfortable, you can slide, you can slide your finger down uh, really along any... Um, seam on the baseball uh, for the slider. I've also seen guys who grip it this way and now they're pushing down on this seam here as they're throwing their as they're throwing their slider. The uh, other uh, pitch that I would say you could tinker with uh, finger placement and pressure would be uh, the cutter. So if you have uh, your fastball grip basically bringing your fingers together offsetting the baseball a quarter of a turn here um, is is I would say the first grip that I uh, try with guys if they're just learning how to throw a cutter. Try to have the thumb right underneath uh, the middle finger here. And the key here is you wanna offset the baseball. So if you're a left-handed um, thrower, it's probably showing right-handed actually on the video, but uh, you wanna have more baseball on the inside uh, when you're throwing it. And as opposed to the slider here, you're really focused on keeping your fingers down through the ball at, at release uh, to get that good late uh, cutting action. If that grip isn't, isn't working for you, uh, what I've seen uh, some guys do is on the, uh, basically where the two horseshoes meet up at the top here, put your fingers together, 
but you're offsetting it to where you're a little bit more down uh, the baseball. You still offset it here and you're really pushing more with your index finger down on the top of the seam. Uh, for some guys that gets a better cutting action uh, late with, with late life. So hope that helps. The question was uh, if my pitch grips or if my pitches aren't um, as effective as I'd like them to be, uh, should I tinker with my grip? Should I change the placement of my finger um, on the baseball? Um, and my answer is yes. I, I'm a big fan of tinkering with uh, the grips for really any of your pitches, um, but there's two parts to it. It's not just the finger uh, placement on the ball, but it's also the pressure uh, that you're applying with your fingers, uh, finger, specifically fingertips, at um, pitch release. So hope that answers the question. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, leave a comment um, or send me a message and I'd be, uh, be happy to, to answer them. Hope that helped. Thanks.